Let's begin with the start condition. The start condition is invoked by the TWCR register, the two-wire control register. Within that register, there is TWINT, TWEA, TWSTA, I'm sure you can figure out what that one is, TWSTO, TWWC, TWEN, and TWIE. We've already talked about this one. This is the interrupt enable, so we don't have to worry about that one during the start condition. The TWEN is the, the enable, so we need to make sure that's enabled during a start condition. And the TWSTA is the start bit. And the TWINT needs to be written to one as well because this is the flag and this will be used quite often in the communication and by setting this bit you're clearing the flag. Once we have written a one to these bits we have invoked a start condition. To confirm that the start condition has been invoked and has been accepted you need to pull the TWINT flag so we know that the start condition has been accepted and confirmed. To pull the TWINT flag all you need to do is use this command and it will wait until the flag is set. Next you need to check the status register for value of hexadecimal 8 which is the status of a start condition. If it doesn't return this status, then you can have the program go, in, go to an error routine. In my routine, it'll be, uh, it'll blink the LED a few times to inform you that it has gone into an error state. So to invoke a start condition, you clear the flag by writing a 1 to TWINT, write a 1 to TWSTA, and write a 1 to TWEN. And then you pull that, the TWINT to, to make sure the flag is set, and then you check against the w, uh, TWSR, which is the status register, that it returned a, a value of 8 in hexadecimal. The next instruction we would give is to deliver the slave address and a, either a read or a write. The slave address is 7 bits long, giving the possibility of 128 devices that could be connected to the I squared C. Most devices will have an assigned address that is established by the manufacturer. This particular device, the ADXL345 accelerometer, allows for two different addresses. The addresses can be set using the alt address pin, which is also the SDO pin. The SDO pin, if it's tied high, the address is 0x1d. If it's tied low, the address is 0x53 or 53 in hex. I'm going to go over the example tied high. You can see that the SDO pin is tied high with this jumper here. And I'll go over the values that it needs to be for a read and a write. But the if it's tied low, then the address is 0x53. For a write, that's actually 0xA6. And for read, it's 0xA7. And I'll go over the reasons why this value changes when you have a read and a write. Last bit, or the zero bit, is the read or write bit. The write bit would be this bit, zero, it would be equal to a zero. If it's read, it would be a one. In the example that I'll be showing, my slave address is 0x1d, and the write bit would be zero, or a read bit would be a 1. So you would add either a 0 or 1 to the beginning. So you would take the 7 bits and you would shift it to the left one, one digit over and then add either a 0 or a 1 to that place. In this case, a read would be a 0x3b and a write would be a 0x3a. Let's look at that process a little bit more closely.
Here are the 8 bits. The binary equivalent of 0x1d would be 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 0, 0, 0. We left shift this number, which brings this number shifted 1 over, and this bit drops off. And if we're reading, we would put a 1 here, or if we're writing, we would put a 0 here. So if we put a 1 here, that would equal 3b. And obviously, if there's a 0 here, that would be 1 less than 3b, which is 3a. So the resulting value of the slave address plus the reading or writing value or bit will be passed into the TWDR, the data register. If we're reading, it would be 3b or 3a for writing. Then we clear the flag and enable using the TWCR again, just like in the in the in the start condition, but we're not going to use the TWSTA. So this will equal 1 in the TWINT, which is clearing the flag, and a 1 in the TWEN bit. And then we wait for the, the flag to be set again. And then we need to check to make sure everything went correctly using the, the status register. And we're going to check it to see if it returned a 0x18 for a write or 0x40 for a read. So if we were using the read, we would check the TWSR, see if it returned a 0x40. If we did a write, which is the 3a, then we would check the TWSR for a 1.8, which is a write. It's an SLA plus a write. And both of these are with an acknowledge, not an not acknowledge. I didn't mention in the, this in the start condition, but the way you check would be if this is a mask. So we're doing the and bitwise operation here equals the, f the result, which would be, in this case, since it's a read, it would be 0x40. So if this happens, then that means that if it's not the 0x40, then there should be, it should go to some error code to inform you that there is an error. Otherwise, it can go on to the next process. So we've looked at what it takes to create a start condition. We have established the slave and read and write, and then the, the ACK, which is the acknowledge, which is the, the process of waiting, and then making sure that the status register has returned a condition that shows the slave, read, write, and the ACK. And then we have left to show the writing of the data, and then the ACK, and the stop, and the repeat start on this type of scenario, and then starting with some reads or some writes. Now one thing that is important to understand is that when you're reading, you are going to be establishing the acknowledge or the not acknowledge. When you're delivering the slave and the write or the slave and the read, you are listening for an acknowledge. And when you're writing data, you're also waiting for an acknowledge from the slave. So when you're doing the slave read write, you're waiting for an acknowledge or a not acknowledge. And when you're writing the data, you're also waiting for the acknowledge from the slave. When you're reading data from the slave, you are going to be creating the acknowledge to specify to the slave that you want more information or a not acknowledge to specify to the slave that you are finished reading information from the slave. And then you can proceed the knack with a stop. So let's take a look at how you would write the data and then wait for an acknowledge and then stop. The process of writing data to a slave or sending a write data to a slave is the same process of sending a slave address and a read or write. Because in both cases you have to wait for an acknowledge. You're using the same register, TWDR, 
the data register to hold the information that you're going to be writing. And let's say I'm writing to 0x30, for instance. And this number, you're wondering what I would be writing to the device anyway. In the data sheet of the device, there will most likely be a set of registers. And you just have to look for those registers and what those registers either do, if you can write to them, if you can read, if you can only read from them, or if you can write or read from them. Generally, if you can write, write to them, you can read from them as well. But there are some registers you'll only be able to read. For instance, the ID register or the address register, you'll only be able to read that one, which is actually the first example we'll, we'll do is reading that particular register. So you'd use the TWDR, the data register, to pass in the data or value, and this will, the, the, the data register will wait until the bus is ready and shift this information out to the bus. So this is the only thing you actually need to to get that started. The next next instruction is the TW control register, CR. And just like in the previous example, it's going to be clearing the flag and enabling the I squared C. So that would be TW INT and then TWEN. And the next instruction, we're just going to be waiting for this TWINT to be set, which is the acknowledge received by the device. And then we're going to check to see what the status register has returned. And this is the same condition statement you'd see before, so I'm just going to write the status register must equal either 0x28 or 0x50. And this is for a data to be transmitted or a data to be received with an ACK, acknowledge, not a NAC. A NAC would be the addresses of 0x30 for writing or 0x58. And this is pretty critical. I mean, you have to make sure that you get the right address returned by the status register that you would expect from the device. And that's all written in the device's data sheet. Now, the only thing left to explain is the repeat start and the reading the data and sending an, an ACK or NAC and a stop. I'm not, gonna I'm not going to explain the repeat start because it's exactly the same as the start. The only difference is when you're doing a repeat start, your status register must equal a value of 0x10. That's very important. The only difference between a start, because the start has a status register returned as 0x08, and the repeat start has a status register returned as 0x10. So let's take a look at how you would read the data and then send an ACK or a NAC. When you're reading from the I squared C, you'll have some variable, which will be an 8-bit variable. We'll call it an unsigned int that's 8 bits long and that will have that will be some variable of your choosing so you're going to take that variable let's call it data variable okay you're going to take that data variable and that's going to equal the the data register and if you're wanting to send an ACK to receive more information from the I squared C bus then you need to use the TW CR, which is the control register, and that's going to equal 1 in the TWINT. It's going to equal a 1 in the TWEN for the enable. And there's an additional value or additional bit that we have to set, and that's a 1 in the TWEA bit. And this is the ACK bit, the two wire ACK bit. So when you put a 1 in the TWEA, you are pushing an ACK onto the I squared C bus so the slave knows that it needs to keep the option of reading open so you can read another byte. And we're going to be waiting for the TWINT as before flag to be set, which is the same thing as, as this line. And the status register, the TWSR, will need to equal since we're reading and we're expecting an ACK to be received, 
should be 0x58. I'm sorry, that's 0x50. Zero, zero zero. As we specified here, reading, this is writing and reading. So reading and an act received is 0x50. So the status register must equal 0x50. If it doesn't, then it goes to an error. In the condition where we need to read the I squared C uh, information from the from the device, but we don't need this ACK where we are finished reading, we would send a NACK, and all we need to do in this scenario is to change this. We don't need this anymore. because We're not sending an ACK. All we're doing is we're going to be enabling it and, and setting the flag, or clearing the flag. And then we do the same thing, we wait for the flag to be set, and then instead of the status register being equal to 0x50, we need it to be equal to the 0x58. After we send the 0x58, or we check to see if the status register has a 0x58, then we, we can finally do a stop. So the stop is simply going to the TWCR, the control register again, and that will equal 1 in the TWINT, 1 in the TWEN, and 1 in the TWSTO for stop. We have gone through all of the scenarios that you would expect from I squared C. Start conditions, stop conditions, repeat start conditions, sending slave address with a read or write bit, reading data, and writing data. You now have all the information needed to develop your own I squared C two wire interface program using what I've explained in these videos for I squared C. In the next video, I'm going to show a full example in code how to communicate with the I squared C device, the accelerometer in this case, and we'll also write this code refactoring all of the repeated code like waiting for the ACK, waiting for the NACK, waiting for the responses from the register, checking the responses from the register, writing and reading data. However, this next video is going to be exclusive content. Please consider watching the next video and supporting my efforts in making these videos. Thank you for watching.